I want to encourage you with something. Every once in a while, specifically either at the end of the year or sometimes more often than not at the beginning of the year, I'll hear someone say or someone will ask me, Pastor, what do you do? I, I feel like I've been doing the right thing and I feel so tired. I feel like I'm worn out. I feel like I've served and served and served or I've given and given and given. I've tithed and I've tithed, but I really don't see that breakthrough that I've been believing God for. And I want to talk to you for just a second, because if you're like probably the rest of us, there are times where you just get a little bit fried, a little bit weary, a little bit tired in just the methodical plotting. You know, I know we all need a vacation once in a while. We all need a rest once in a while. But I want to talk to you about the mindset of continuing to do the right thing for the right reason and continue to do it for the rest of your life. Now, the scripture that I want to read to you is a famous scripture that Paul wrote in the book of Galatians. It's in chapter 6 and verse 9. It says this, Let us not become weary in doing well, for in due season, at the right time, we shall reap if we do not faint, if we don't faint. Well, what does it mean to faint? To just grow so exhausted and to grow so tired that you wear out, that you quit. Now, if you've been in church for many years at all, you can look around the church world. You can look around, just do a, uh, an inventory of all the people through the years that you've known come through the church through the years. And many have fainted. Many have quit. Why? Why is that? Well, because we all fight the same battle. We all fight the same struggle. And that struggle is to keep doing the right thing, even when you're not seeing it at the moment, even when you're not feeling it at the moment, even when it looks like the harvest isn't coming up. When I was a little boy, I was so fascinated with my grandpa Chester, my mom's dad. Now, what I was fascinated with was he had, from the time I can remember being little till uh, his later life, he always had a garden, a big garden too. I mean, it wasn't just a little bitty garden. He had a strawberry patch. He had a corn patch. He grew green beans, he grew squash and all kinds of different vegetables, cucumbers, and I was always fascinated with it. I loved it. Just like when I was little, I was drawn to the church. I was also drawn to the garden. But maybe like you, uh, you've done this probably before, at least I know I did. I couldn't wait for this stuff to grow. I would help my grandpa plant the seeds. Sometimes we just plant just a few. And uh, man, the next morning, I, I dreamt about it. I went to bed thinking about the harvest. And when I would wake up the next morning, did you know that that ground looked exactly the same as it did when we had planted that seed? It was so frustrating to me. I didn't know, but I, was, I had been born into the microwave society. Even though I was born before the microwave, I had the microwave mindset way before way before microwaves were invented. And I think all of us have that. We have this tendency, we have this want, we have this kind of inner thing of like instant gratification. If I plant a seed, man, I want that seed to grow now. I want that seed to produce the harvest now. And as you know, what I did was I would go back out the next day and I would look at that where we planted it and man, nothing had happened. I even remember doing this. I went home to my house and planted some cucumber seeds. Now watch this, because I think Christian people do this too often. We put the seed in the ground. I dug it up. I did what I was supposed to do, just like Grandpa had done the day before or a couple days before. But I put that cucumber seed. I had a packet of seeds. I put those seeds in the ground, and I waited the next day, and I was so frustrated when I didn't see anything happening. You know what I did? <laughs> a big mistake. I dug it to see if that seed had started to sprout or do anything. And guess what? After a day, it hadn't done anything. It's just like the seed was there. So I did that a few times. I would dig that seed up. I'd look at it. I'd put it back in the ground. I'd cover it back up. And I would wait uh, two or three more days. And I would get so frustrated because I'd dig it up three or four days later. And guess what? It hadn't done anything. Eventually, it started to crack open a little bit just from the rain and the moisture. But I think I killed the seed. I think I killed it because nothing ever came up. 
And I told my grandpa about it. I said, Papa, look, this, uh, it's not working for me. And he said, son, you have to give it time. Seed, time, and then the harvest. Well, it was so hard for me to be patient for the time. And then God started using me in the ministry. I became a tither uh, early. I became a consistent giver above and beyond the tithe. And I began to experience the same feelings of, man, I'm tithing now. I need my bills paid, Jesus. And the Lord had to work this process in me of being patient, not growing weary, not getting worn out, but in the season, in the right season, there was gonna be a harvest. And I wanna say this to you. Here's how I want this to relate to you. This is practical. This is for you today. Some of you are frustrated with your giving. You're frustrated with the seed that you've got in the ground. Uh, some of you might feel like, man, I, I've been doing this and I'm not seeing it. Let me just say to you, your harvest, listen to me, your harvest is on the way. Your harvest is on the way. But the instruction of the Lord is to not grow weary. Now that word weary in the Greek is really a word that means you're in the middle of it. Don't grow weary of it, in the middle of it. But then the second part of the word is actually a word evil. It's an evil word. And what he's saying is don't get so worn out with the frustration of evil that you give up on your harvest. Listen to me, I wanna say this. If you've been sowing, sowing love, sowing forgiveness, sowing financial seed, which is what he's talking about here, you're sowing seed into the ground. I want to say to you today, be patient. Let the season come. What can you do in between? Make sure to keep the weeds out. That's what we were talking about a couple weekends ago uh, here at Enjoy Church. Keep, keep your heart right. Keep your head from becoming hard headed or your heart from becoming hard hearted. Keep a atmosphere and a culture and an environment of your heart where the seed of God's word goes in your faith as you continue to sow, as you continue to give, that you rest knowing harvest day's coming. It just is part of the process. I've got my seed in the ground and I with joy I'm gonna work hard at my harvest. Now, a lot of people forget that part of it too, that the farmer works maybe harder at harvest time than they do at planting time. Planting time, you get it in the ground and you do that consistently. But at harvest time, there is a process of getting the harvest out of the ground. And I wanna encourage you, keep your faith, keep your energy, most of all, keep your joy during that time because your joy will propagate and motivate a, an atmosphere for faith. And it takes faith. Without faith, you really, you can't please the Lord and you really can't receive from the Lord if you don't walk in faith. So let me just encourage you. Some of you got a lot of seed in the ground. You know the good news? You got a lot of harvest coming back to you, baby. You do, I'm excited for you. I declare the harvest is coming to you. God is going to produce the fruit from your life in every area that you've sown seed of forgiveness, of hope. You've encouraged someone else. You've given, you've contributed, you're a tither. Hey, harvest day's coming back to you. Get ready. Harvest is work, but it's coming and your needs will be met and you will produce the fruit that God has for you in your life. I declare that over you in the name and the authority of his word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.